Mesdames et Messieurs, chers collègues, je suis John Hirsch, conseiller principal pour le programme Afrique à l'Institut international pour la paix. Et je suis ravi de vous accueillir après cet après-midi à IPI pour discuter du retour de la paix en République centrafricaine en, comp en compagnie de Monseigneur Dieudonné Inza Palenga, archevêque de Bangui, Imam Omar Kobin Layama, président de la communauté islamique de Centrafrique et du révérend Nicolas Bangu, qui lui est président de l'Alliance évangélique de République Centrafrique. Uh, depuis la prise de pouvoir par la coalition rebelle Selec en mars 2013, la République centrafricaine a sombré dans un cycle de violence interreligieuse qui ont conduit à l'effondrement des institutions de l'État. On coûté uh, la vie à plusieurs milliers de personnes et ont déplacé plus de 650 000 autres, y compris 2090 000 personnes qui ont trouvé refuge dans les pays voisins du Cameroun, du Tchad, de la République démocratique du Congo et de la République du Congo. Uh, L'arrivée au pouvoir de Mme Catherine Samba Panza comme chef d'État de la transition le 20 janvier dernier a permis de donner un nouveau souffle aux efforts visant à mettre fin aux violences en République centrafricaine, restaurer la paix et la sécurité et faciliter la réconciliation des communautés désormais divisées. Ces efforts s'appuient notamment sur le déploiement en décembre 2013 de la mission internationale de soutien à la Centrafrique sous conduite africaine MISCA, soutenue par les forces françaises de l'opération Sangari. Uh, ce déploiement a permis une amélioration de la situation de sécurité à Bangui et en divers autres endroits de la RCA. Toutefois, ainsi que la note du secrétaire général des Nations Unies dans son dernier rapport sur la République centrafricaine, la MISC fait face à des défis majeurs. De ce fait, si la situation de sécurité s'est relativement améliorée, la poursuite d'incidents violents qui demeurent pour la plupart impunis, la peur d'une épuration ethnique des populations musulmanes et les risques croissants d'une grave, d'une crise humanitaire grave continuent de requérir une mobilisation urgente et accrue de la communauté internationale pour mettre fin à la crise. C'est ainsi que la proposition, qu'après la proposition d'un plan en six points, le secrétaire général, M. Ben Ki-moon, a proposé l'autorisation par le Conseil de sécurité de l'ONU d'une opération de maintien de la paix pour faire face aux principaux problèmes de sécurité en RCA. Alors qu'un transfert d'autorité de la MISC à une opération de maintien de la paix des Nations Unies n'est envisagé qu'à partir du mois de septembre prochain, c'est-à-dire pas avant six mois. La discussion de ce jour vise à présenter un état des lieux de la situation actuelle en RCA et les défis qui persistent en matière de rétablissement de la paix et la sécurité dans le pays. En outre, j'ai demandé aux panélistes de partager leurs réflexions sur un certain nombre de recommandations spécifiques et concrètes, s'ils concrètes, peuvent, qui pourraient permettre la, à la communauté internationale de mieux appuyer les efforts nationaux et régionaux visant, vise à ramener une paix durable, la stabilité et la prospérité en République centrafricaine. Uh, les biographies des trois panélistes sont disponibles dans le programme qui vous a été distribué. distribué. Sans plus tarder, je donne la parole à M. Insabalenga. Then Imam Kobin Layama and Reverend 
Bangu will follow uh, each of them with also about 10 minutes uh, after which uh, we will have a moment for questions and answers, a Q&A. Uh, Archbishop uh, Zapalanga, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, dear friends um, uh, who are here with us today to listen about the cause of the Central African Republic. Um, all religious leaders, um, we as religious leaders, are here to plead in favor of the Central Af African Republic people who, uh, for more than a year now, have been suffering. Um, uh, whether they are locally uh, or abroad, they are facing major challenges and they are asking themselves some questions. For example, is there still a world or a uh, uh, a world that can still think about these um, uh, destitute population, and we, as religious leaders, we've immediately said that this crisis um, is, uh, which has been described to us as a religious crisis, is not a religious crisis. Actually, it is a, a military and political uh, crisis. Let me explain. On the t December 20, uh, 10th of 2012, uh, s uh, that is when Seleka started to approach Bangui in order to overthrow the government, uh, Seleka being composed of several uh, uh, organizations, um, their uh, uh, claims were not uh, religious based. But um, these mercenaries that have been uh, hired in Sudan and in Chad only speak Arabic. And very quickly, when they came down, the they uh, started to use uh, the uh, Muslim community, and we know very well, actually, that uh, my friend of my friend is my friend, and my the enemy of my enemy is my enemy. So, uh, so uh, these people are commit crimes, and they are c c uh, come to uh, rest and settle in a Muslim Muslim community. So, so their neighbors are asking questions: Why did our neighbors uh, uh, host some uh, people? Uh, um, that they are hurting us, and uh, a lot of people were in that situation. We heard that in the Bangui, Christians were uh, persecuted and mistreated. We, as religious leaders, um, uh, the Imam here, uh, the pastor, and myself, have decided to go on the ground in cities that, uh, uh, and when we saw in uh, we saw in big cities uh, things that surprised us. Um, in other words, uh, the Christians suffered. Uh, there, there was a pillage. Uh, the people were persecuted, uh, and there were some exactions. But also, the Muslim community was suffering quite quite a lot. That what was lacking was a space to talk. And we, as religious leaders, um, our, for us, our role was to create this space so that the imam, the pastors, and the priests could talk talk about their suffering and about their uh, points of views because the state was failing more and more, and we couldn't find uh, 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 forces from the states in the cities. Uh, you know, the, the leaders of the cities were uh, world leaders. So we met them and we uh, talked to them and we asked them to maintain and preserve the life of the people who are, were there. We talked the truth and we asked also to all the religious leaders to to work hand in hand so that uh, 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 so, so to not to get into this crisis so that it doesn't have a sectarian aspect. So uh, uh, 24, March 24, uh, uh, Seleka took over the government. And while we thought the situation would be uh, uh, better, we were very surprised also that the uh, exaction and crimes and persecutions continued, and also rapes continued. And there were uh, villages where burned down, people were mistreated. Silica had become a perpetrator of uh, crimes for many people. For the very first time in our, the history of our country, uh, a, a group that took over the power uh, dared to spread it all over the country. Up until now, when somebody took Bangui, you had the entire country, and everybody was uh, subjugated to that. But now you take Bangui, and then you take your agents everywhere. Myself, I participated in um, uh, in a hiring uh, uh, operation when Selec arrived, I went to meet uh, the uh, minister of the army at the time, Mr. Serdin. I saw vehicles uh, uh, 
uh, who were taking uh, young people and uh, putting them in the uh, in the trucks and, and then going away. I thought, how are we going to do with this army that was building up? And uh, I was told these people are going to be trained uh, 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 on the ground like others. And I know that it's going to be a disaster. These are young people, were people who were unemployed, who were not out of school, prisoners, uh, criminals. Uh, everybody was gathered in those groups. And all of these people have sometimes become uh, heads of some uh, sections of the army colonels and and as a result uh, we ha have uh, crimes that continue in many cities and we've seen at some point that the tensions were rising and the ability to resist was diminished those uh, uh, those that went through were in all corners of the country everybody was tired of it uh, all you needed was a drop, uh, uh, an additional drop in the bucket, and the the, the, the Antibalaka group was a group that existed since 1990, and this group, uh, w which was initiated with amulet, uh, 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 were uh, uh, attacking uh, people who were cu cutting roads, and they wanted to, uh, they tried to. Uh, push farmers out of the country. Now the young people that wanted to uh, rev uh, exact some revenge and, uh, for crimes committed in the village wanted to go through this initiation and fight against the Seligat. But we denounce all the fact that these Antebalaka groups are, are now attacking the Muslim community. And uh, we uh, thought it was impossible and intolerable uh, to uh, have uh, such a situation continue. That is why we, as religious leaders, we've refused that situation in our country. And very quickly, with the uh, platform that was uh, put together five days uh, uh, after the, the departure of Silica, we started to uh, Advocate. And uh, with the people who, uh, uh, the youth groups that we put in place, uh, Muslim, Christian, and Catholic, and Protestant groups, uh, 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 go through t on the radio t so that peace come back. Um, and you have seen uh, scenes of cannibalism that, that on TV you've seen uh, a scene of uh, exodus of Muslims. Uh, all those uh, images are uh, very hard uh, uh, images to accept because because in our culture, we have never seen anything like that. But the, the group, uh, this group arrives with another way of, uh, with another type of violence, and with the introduction of hatred, people would fight back. We'd reject to the fact that some politicians use the use unemployed use or out of school use to uh, attack a community, and that is why we denounce them to say no. You can't use religion uh, as a mean to take over the power. Uh, sometimes I said that some politicians uh, want to walk over uh, human blood to reach their goals and, and in order to and to govern the country. And we thought that this way doesn't uh, contribute to the social cohesion or to fraternity in our country. The platform is an answer to such a situation, and we say no to violence, no to exodus and no to persecution and no to uh, the, the, the types of uh, attacks on some communities. That's why each time we go there, we, we talk, we talk about that. What do we really want to do today? Not only we want to advocate in favor of our cause, but we want also to create spaces and gateways uh, or, or bridges where our platform can be uh, realized. With the crisis in our country, we've seen young people, people were being trained in those groups, and we think that a school that will be based on the uh, the platform that's one of our recommendations. A school uh, creating a school where Muslim and Catholics and Protestant could learn together would be a good thing. Mixing the various people will allow the youth to appreciate one another, will uh, help eliminate prejudices, and will help develop a Republican spirit. It will help to defend the country. 
in the worst part of the crisis, uh, the peak of the crisis, we saw that the people who were ill uh, were take uh, patients were taken to hospital to be executed, and we've seen uh, Tabalaka who prevent um, uh, Muslim patients to access a hospital. We would like to have a hospital because when you're sick, uh, the, the religion is irrelevant. So hospitals should welcome uh, Muslim, Catholic, and Protestant, and we should say that all together we should. Uh, uh, enjoy uh, health care. Through this uh, project, we would like to see a, a pedagogical, pedagogical message, uh, a, a structure where uh, doctors and teachers, uh, where everybody is, is mixed together. And, uh, and that would be a way to trust again one another, to work together, to collaborate, to uh, dream about the future. Today, the Central African Republic is a country where there's no more state. It's a ghost country in terms of the political state, and uh, the state people are, are not even in the back country. We've done uh, almost 1,000 kilometers with the Imam, and we went to places where you only have uh, the uh, uh, Deputy governor, and you, are, you 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 don't have anybody. There's no structure. The, the people are afraid. There's no security. We've been to places where we found people who uh, threw away their motorcycles because they just heard a car coming. People are afraid to just go and work in the field. So that is to say that if we men ask for the uh, peacekeeping op for a peacekeeping operation, it's not uh, because uh, it, it's not superfluous because it's uh, people are afraid. We must defend the civilian. Uh, these are our uh, people, and that is why we came here to uh, uh, to advocate in a favor of country. Thank you very much for coming here to listen to us, uh, and thank you for all the uh, people who will uh, testify on the behalf of Central African uh, Republic people. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation, for the uh, discussion of these very serious uh, issues. Um, Imam Omar Kami Layama, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Hirsch. Uh, thank you very much to uh, the audience here for uh, this uh, at attention that you're giving to uh, uh, interfaith uh, uh, platform for the Central African Republic. I would like to add a word to what was said by the Archbishop. Uh, the uh, the real uh, root of uh, this uh, crisis in the Central African Republic. Uh, you all agree with us that the Silica is a coalition. Uh, uh, Silica in French means coalition. So the, uh, in all, it's composed of a number of different groups. And, uh, and they have a goal. This coalition is made up of uh, uh, made of uh, four uh, political and military groups uh, that had also signed a peace agreement with the uh, uh, government that was there before that uh, the Bosise government. Unfortunately, they didn't benefit from the. Uh, uh, of uh, the, the, the movement to put down the arms uh, and the, the weapons. Uh, the, the, the government uh, financed that. The government at the time had received um, money for that effort to demilitarize uh, the country, but um, uh, this group kept their weapons and, and that, that created a, a bad uh, governance issue in our country. And uh, in light of the uh, political degradation of this situation in our country, these groups have created a coalition in order to. Uh, uh, go to Bangui and um, with one clear goal, which is to t overthrow uh, the government. And th so that is one of the main c uh, uh, root causes of this uh, crisis and um, poor uh, governance of this uh, demilitarization initiative. And, uh, and this, it's uh, made of 90% uh, of Muslims. For sure, it was uh, the north and the northeast of the country uh, where you have a majority of Muslims. So th you have less people also because when you s some people say that this, the area is mostly made uh, of Muslim communities, it, it represents at least two and a half percent of the uh, population of the country, uh, the area where the silica was created. Uh, so the arrival on Bangui had a number of uh, negative effects. They uh, 
uh, they uh, uh, targeted the, the Christian with pillage crimes of all kinds and uh, we could not uh, just sit there in silence we uh, had to react and uh, five days after they arrived in Bangui we started to organize uh, uh, media campaigns uh, uh, talking on the radio to denounce uh, those crimes and also to denounce uh, the uh, campaign that the government had already uh, started what did the government do? The government started uh, organized several meetings to inform the people, saying that the enemies of the president are the enemies of the people. Also, uh, these are Muslims that come from the Sudan, from the north, uh, from the uh, Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait, from various places, and, uh, and they, uh, But actually, these people are from the Central African Republic. Uh, and they, and they pretended that they were foreigners, that were Muslims coming from abroad. In fact, they are sons of the country. They are uh, uh, part of the indigenous population. That, that is a uh, danger. That's, uh, it started like that. They started to uh, name a number of ministers. They started, there was a minister, Kukura, uh, that, uh, whose role was to increase the pressure of the Muslim uh, population in Bangui. Uh, there, uh, uh, there were a number of uh, Arbitrary ar uh, arrest, uh, murders, um, who, uh, who had their parents and relatives in the Salika coalition. So that created a lot of tension in both communities. That was uh, uh, created a tremendous tension in the uh, Christian and uh, Muslim communities. That is the uh, that is really the uh, origin of the central. Uh, African uh, crisis. A lot of things have been touched upon by the uh, Archbishop, but I would like to talk about the uh, reconciliation strategy. What did we recommend um, in our uh, uh, strategy for the reconciliation of our community in order to, so that trust comes back uh, among the communities uh, and for those uh, especially who are abroad and who should come back? And uh, We've started a, no a, a number of campaigns. Uh, a number of uh, campaign outside of the country to uh, talk to our compatriots. Um, we we t uh, we started when the Seleka was still not in power, and we went to cities um, uh, that were occupied by the rebels to meet the uh, Christian and, and Muslim communities. Talk to the leaders, uh, organize uh, public rallies in which uh, to, to which uh, the Seleka participated as well and we uh, talked to we organized meeting with uh, Selika to make them aware of the danger uh, of uh, about what they were uh, do, doing what they were you can't destroy a country uh, if you want to uh, govern a country and the fact is that they destroyed everything uh, they've uh, uh, they, um, they, they they've eliminated anything that um, was allowing the country to to function, and the, uh, all the institutions were destroyed, uh, infrastructure were destroyed, everything uh, was trivialized, and uh, uh, they fell in their own trap in a way when they took over uh, the government, and uh, they were unable to put everything back together as uh, Bosse did because he destroyed everything. He 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 was ten years in power and did not uh, rebuild anything uh, of what he had destroyed. So that is how chaos arrived. That is always after. Uh, uh, coups which are never in the interest, in the best interest of the people, but in the uh, best interest of maybe of a community, of a region, of a, a group of friends, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. That is what actually happened uh, in the Central African Republic and how our country was run. So our strategy is about first training in Bangui campaign agents, uh, uh, advocating pay, peace and uh, and talking to the people in the districts and in all the country. We can't do everything together, but uh, we should work in the best interest of the country, especially in the areas where the crisis has not arrived yet. And the platform, and you, you have a number of imam and priests that are present in the communities. and. Uh, uh, they shouldn't be instrumentalized by the uh, political parties that are trying to use uh, this crisis uh, 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 on the basis of a uh, so-called sectarian war. After that, the campaign agents uh, uh, are going to tell us uh, the, what challenges each village is facing. Uh, uh, these uh, challenges has to be a sort of a, a, a group and uh, uh, consolidated in a way. Uh, 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 
uh, see everybody should be able to, to we should be able to know who did what uh, if they did good thing or bad thing all of these issues should be uh, uh, drafted and written down and put down on paper and uh, uh, that should be uh, 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 allowed to uh, be submitted to the commission uh, a commission that will evaluate all of that and the commission should be uh, uh, present in this community in other words the idea is to clarify uh, by bringing up the truth and have after we put the truth down on paper, the justice system will do its work. You can have a legislation without the, the justice uh, uh, and the impunity, of course, has contributed gravely to the crisis in our country. The crisis is also a crisis of impunity. Uh, we find the same people who uh, govern the country uh, very poorly, who've killed, who've uh, abused the public funds they're uh, the same who are here who are today fighting for the power and who have taken hostage the pub people of the country and the people of the country of course cannot uh, be served by uh, those people um, so uh, the people is set aside and is not benefiting from anything and that is also what is creating the frustration and a marginalization and indignation all the, those kind of words that are very relevant in the situation of our country that is in short what uh, uh, we uh, I could say we are three here to talk uh, we want to work for reconciliation we want first truth then justice and then reconciliation without justice there won't be any reconciliation, a sincere reconciliation, and we'll act only uh, in a treacherous environment, and that wouldn't allow uh, the, the people to uh, gain trust in their government anymore, and that wouldn't allow to maintain the social cohesion. Thank you very much. So we began to speak about a strategy for reconciliation, and so you might think, about what we need in order to achieve a real reconciliation. Our third speaker is Reverend Gbongu. I, I give you the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman of the International Peace Institute. <coughs> My colleagues here have spoken about the genesis, the origin of this crisis in the Central African Republic. I, per I could perhaps add a few words to what they have already said. Currently, we've blamed the Central African crisis on religion. People have said that it's a religious crisis. My colleague, the Imam, briefly told you how that idea came to be and when it came into being. It's always, always politicians who don't want to let the Central African people live in peace amongst themselves, who don't want to let the Central African people manage their own daily lives. So we call up, up, up upon they have uh, called upon resistance uh, against the Selikala movement uh, in order to turn to take it out of power. They've, they've said that Muslims have wanted to destroy the country, and people with weak minds have believed that message, and they've acted because they believe that message, and that's what's caused th this crisis. It's religion. <coughs> Silica came to, to power uh, with the help of Bozize, as the, uh, the Archbishop just said. We, the Christians, since uh, independence in our country, uh, have, have been in in a p position of power for 50 years. That's the message that people have been spreading. People have been listening to it. Crimes have been committed. And now self-defense groups have been mobilized by Bozizé, by President Bozizé. 
in order to give them a lust for power. I say the lust for power because when they were handling self-defense in villages, it was against uh, pe people who were uh, illegally hunting animals. But now uh, th these people have been marching towards Bangui and facing uh, le uh, 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 they've been going to, from village to village, and now Bangui is undergoing uh, an invasion, like uh, an uh, a swarm of locusts uh, of the anti baraka people, who haven't uh, let the the population go about their own business, and there's been a lot of misery in Bangui. And some areas of Bangui can't even be be entered. The, f the fifth and the seventh uh, districts of the of the the city can't even be visited. I live in the fifth uh, district. D buses and taxis don't even go there. You have anti baraka uh, movements, and then uh, the resistance that are confronting each other there. There are also Burundis and Rwandis who are there, they're powerless. What, what, are, what is the policy of anti-Barakas? When they see soldiers of the Miska or Sangaris, they hide their equipment or their arms, their weapons. But, but once they've gone through, they come out again and they start to attack. So what's going on now? Before th they came, and they said that they weren't going to do like the Sadaka, but now they're the ones who are, are looting, saying that they're uh, a Christian militia, but they're uh, attacking property, uh, the property of non-Muslim people. I don't even want to use the term Christian because, Christian or Muslim, because <coughs> these are all Africans. There, there are people who are neither a Muslim nor Christian, but who are African. So you look at these two districts, and you wouldn't believe the destruction there. So I feel the duty to say that uh, Bozi, uh, who wants to come back to, to power, Those who are who are, are t calling for the return of, of their their leader, they never thought a, a, about who could come 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 back uh, in a democratic way. So that's the situation. So the international community is facing this reality with us, and we're saying, well, listen. They're saying we need to wait and see. Uh, excuse me. We have to wait for the African Union to uh, s prove itself. But in the meantime, people are dying. People say the African Union has to prove itself. Well, we're not uh, calling into question the leg legitimacy of the African Union, but we have to save lives. We have to save lives. Some Central African authorities, for example, the, in the Ministry of Security and Defense, what are you doing to liberate these two districts. They've always told me we don't have the means to do so. We're afraid for our safety. We don't have an, an army. We don't have a, a, a p police. So w we need people to come quickly to allow the, the CAR to it reestablish authority and it, it, it defend its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. So, uh, dear participants th th at this forum, that's what uh, I have to say. I'd like to conclude by saying, I'd like to, to, to make a call to the conscience of the international co community and uh, make them think about the risk of our country being torn apart. If the international community doesn't act quickly, and if the designers of these plans manage to bring back together Muslims in the north, as they've been planning to do, and if the, 
the rest of the Central African population says, no, we want our country to, to stay whole. What is that going to bring? It's going to bring a fratricidal war to our country. It's going to bring about genocide in our country. And we want the international community to, to take control of its own responsibilities in order to av avoid this risk of war and to free the Central African people from insecurity, uh, both in Bangui and the various provinces. So we want a peacekeeping operation but to be sent immediately by the UN. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you for your very clear presentations. And if you would like to read the Secretary General's March 3rd report, all of these problems are very clearly described therein. So uh, the uh, Charge d'Affaires of the Central African uh, Republic, if you'd like to say a few words, I, I give you the floor. And then we'll have a debate. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I don't have much to say except to thank you, the IPI and everyone who's here. Uh, with, and thank you for your attention to the Central African crisis and the suffering of their people. Four months ago, I, I think in November, The um, uh, um, Ambassador Hirsch uh, br uh, brought us here, and we were, there was many people, and we spoke about the crisis in the CAR. Unfortunately, things have changed since uh, December 5th, 2013. Things aren't the same as they were back in November. So uh, on the invitation of the, the IPI, Central Africans who are living daily through suffering in Bangui, and who are seeing everything that, that, that's happening there. Some people uh, from the, who have seen that with their own eyes are going to speak to you about it. I'd like to thank them for their attendance, and I'd like to tell you that the entire population of the country is very impatient for a peacekeeping operation. Why am I telling you this? The CAR has lived through many crises, crises over the last 10 years, and these crises have always been uh, always been handled by uh, regional groups like such as the CEMAC, but also by the, the UN, such as MINURCA, the uh, Central uh, uh, Mission in Central, uh, Central African Republic of the United Nations. So we haven't yet reached the, the heart of the problem. And for the, the United Nations, Min, the, MINURCA, the MINURCA project only handled security. And every five years, every 10 years, there's always cyclical crises. That's why we need a peacekeeping operation with, that's multidimensional to help us to get to the heart of what the problem is in the Central African problem. We shouldn't only be concerned with security. We need to be concerned with human rights, with humanita humanitarian issues. and a, a number of other uh, dimensions in order to solve the problem. That's the message that I'd like to, 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 get, uh, to convey concerning the Central African Republic. And I thank you for your awareness of what's happening with the Central African Republic. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the Charge d'Affaires. Uh, if there are any questions, now would be a good a moment to ask them, and if you could please say your name and the organization that you represent. My name is Andre Bartoli. I'm the uh, uh, the dean of Seaholt uh, University. Uh, so uh, we're in, located in the United States. I'd like to speak about, uh, I'd like to express my uh, thanks to all the authorities who are here. So um, I'd like to say something about the crisis of state. Uh, 
in the Central African Republic. There's a great crisis of state. What are the, 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 the possibilities of the state to be able to refound itself and go ahead? Is there a possibility for the population now to not just emerge from this crisis, but in the face of, of, of an attack, uh, can we achieve peace? Thank you. So there's not just the immediate crisis, but what are the longer term solutions? Uh, yes, madam. Please. Yes, um, as I said, uh, my name is Judy Cheng Hopkins. I'm the head of the Peace Building Support Office here in New York. And I wanted to thank Ambassador Hirsch and IPI for having gathered you. This as I call you, the luminaries from Bangui, the, the light, uh, the, the light of hope. Uh, okay, just go on. Testing. Can you can you hear me? Ça va? Ça va? Okay. Uh, I, I want to say it again, but I just wanted to thank you for bringing everybody together. Um, we have read in the press what the courageous acts you have done, and as all of you has, have alluded to, you're so right. This is not a religious crisis. This is a political crisis by politicians bent on uh, creating uh, hell, if you wish, uh, in your country in order for their own greed and their own, um, for their own power and greed. So I think you all have, have put your finger on it. It's absolutely right. Um, however, um, you know, let's be very frank. Um, CAR, and maybe I'm not being politically correct, but CAR has not been blessed by enlightened leaders. Uh, your country, unfortunately, has suffered coup after coup after coup for so many decades. Um, so the crisis is not just now. The crisis has been going on for a long time for ordinary people. It's been going on for a long, long time. Uh, and what is a little bit concerning to me is that, yes, uh, there is a role for the international community, of course, you know, the peacekeeping troops that you, you asked for and all that. Uh, but let's not get carried away. I mean, a peacekeeping troop can stabilize the situation. A peacekeeping force can stabilize the situation. You know, it's a painkiller, if you wish. It's a band-aid, if you wish. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, one still has to have, you know, good national leadership to lead you out of the hell you've suffered for so many decades. Uh, so I just want to know, uh, sitting from where you sit, uh, since you're obviously privy to a lot of information. I just want to hear your prognosis of, of the future, of, of, of the time to come, in terms of, of this whole question of national leadership, uh, and this whole question of uh, national ownership that is so vital to, to bring your country out of the crisis finally. What, what is your prognosis? Thank you. Alors, c'est très important. Vous avez parlé uh, imam de mauvais gouvernance. Uh, Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pour avoir une bonne gouvernance en République Centrafrique? Uh, monsieur. I'd just like to say that the uh, s situation in the CAR requires the immediate uh, peacekeeping operation. But in addition to that, we need a, a, a justice program because f for decades we've been living through decades that have caused so many victims to suffer. And these victims haven't had any justice, and they haven't had any equity. So we need uh, 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 an interfaith, uh, multi-party organization to to create a committee to, uh, to uh, judge the perpetrators of war crimes and crimes against humanity. They and they need to be judged by Central African judges, who uh, would possibly be aided by uh, judges from other countries, and so this. A mixed uh, committee would be uh, c composed of Central African judges and prosecuting uh, in, uh, uh, attorneys, uh, DAs, and uh, police authorities. And civil authorities also have an important role to play 
in settling this conflict. And I think that the, the support of civil society in general can help us uh, with everything that we're talking about. And it can help all the, the victims who seek justice. That's just all I wanted to add. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to allow our three panelists to respond to those three questions, and then we'll have another uh, chance to ask more questions. So would you like to answer first? Thank you very much. Uh, the question uh, asked by Andre. So I think we can find ways to create bridges. The state is composed of people. So do we have something like, uh, uh, it's like having a, a, a building, but that's only a facade. And we need uh, people to, to build up the insides of this building, and we need uh, that to be uh, built on a foundation of uh, personal ethics. And uh, people who have uh, a, a love of their profession, not just of their country. We've been lacking leadership, leaders who love the, the state, and to build upon that basis through training and planning. Often what we've seen ha has been an ethnicity-based rec recruitment based on, on tribe or religion. And that has led to uh, mediocre leadership, people who weren't qualified and who brought the state down. That's why it seems like we're in a failing state. We haven't always put the, the, the people who are needed in the positions where they're needed. And we've had people who haven't been uh, up, up to the, the, the challenge that, that they need to face in order to move the state forward. So I believe that it's time, perhaps, to, with this crisis, to change our paradigm, to think another, think about the future in a different way. That means we need to make a, 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 a leap beyond tribe, beyond family, beyond religion, and think about the nation. When we go to school, Teachers don't just teach members of their own tribe. They teach all children. And any one of those children should be able to, to become president if they deserve to. to if. So that's the message we need in cent the Central African Republic. And our politicians uh, often have fear for their lives. Uh, you know, uh, a, a, a politician asked a question about Muslims recently, uh, and that very evening he was executed. So we hope that uh, with that uh, if security comes, people will have the courage to s say their own opinions and to uh, advocate for a better society. That's what we're lacking. W people vote from their gut. People vote for their ethnic group. People vote for their own religion. But that kind of voting, we can't have it anymore. We have to transcend the, those limits to vote for the nation as a whole, to raise our, 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 our minds and our spirits to a higher level. And that way, we'll really reach awareness and a, a greater responsibility will be able to take its rightful place in our country. And I'm tr I trust that tomorrow will be a better nation. Yeah. To the question asked, what is our prognosis uh, about the future of the country or the leadership in our country? Uh, yes, we are religious leaders, but we know that religious religion is about the well-being, it's about the, the social aspect of life. So that leads us to say that we also must think to the quality uh, of the people who are put in charge of uh, governing the country. And uh, therefore, we've uh, uh, planned in our project, uh, uh, our platform, uh, a school. This school will uh, facilitate the mixing of the various communities in our country and the kids who will grow up together 
will have a more republican spirit. You also have to change the generation uh, uh, for political uh, people. That's uh, indispensable because the crisis that we're going through in our country um, uh, has to do with uh, uh, also it's also the issue of managing uh, the the political class, and that class hasn't change. That's what I said earlier. Therefore, we need those schools. And we also have within our strategy, and I want to like to thank Andre uh, who mentioned this is that we also have a program with them to put in place an uh, instrument that will allow uh, the Central African uh, uh, the, the, uh, the people to change and have a more Republican spirit. So for, in terms of governing the country, we said earlier that the international solidarity help us, uh, uh, NGOs, uh, the deciders, uh, you know, the countries that uh, uh, who have good governance should also help us develop the right expertise and implement the proper uh, instrument that will allow us to manage properly our country and will help uh, the uh, Central African population, which uh, where, you know, 75% uh, of the people uh, don't read or write. So uh, we uh, will not have any uh, education system in our country. Therefore, we need to promote education as much as we can so that we change the political class and help the Central African, uh, Central African Republic people uh, to take charge and take, their, uh, take control of their destiny. I would like to say uh, to uh, the chair that the, the, the term was proper, inclusive state. In order to reach, uh, to get an inclusive state, a truly inclusive state, you have to take into account a number of uh, factors. Let me explain. When the international community will stop uh, playing, uh, having a negative role uh, on the choice of the leaders of a particular uh, country, uh, The people of such countries will also learn in the process to take charge in, f uh, in relation to history. We've heard uh, that our country, the Central African Republic, is a country uh, that has a repetition that is one on four coups. It's always through coups that people take power. But these uh, coups are always supported and by uh, neighboring countries or countries of the sub-region. Like this one, you try do everything to... Uh, uh, get him to take power and then... Uh, uh, and, and, and after that, you know, we will throw him because, uh, you know, as, as soon as we don't like him anymore, you know, uh, 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 because the, the, the army is weak, or, uh, uh, there's no army. But the one that is going to be in power at that stage will have to uh, to to uh, behave like a valet, somebody who accepts orders. So there's a, uh, the international community has a responsibility uh, because it, it tends to want to subjugate uh, those. Uh, the, 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 there are some countries that have a role uh, in, in the area, and Chad, for instance, has a negative influence. It's always been Chad. When there's a situation in the Central African Republic that is bad, everybody mentions Chad. So I think the national community should help us to reach a situation where we have an inclusive state. There was an exception, the exception of Mrs. Uh, Sambambasa. That was an exception. It was a surprise for everybody, for the whole world, and including for the people of the Central African Republic, because she was not a candidate for anybody. Uh, uh, nobody in the sub-region. Uh, that is what explained the uh, issues, excuse me, the terms that our uh, poor uh, uh, mama, our poor uh, uh, lady is, is suffering now because it was not a candidate of anybody. She's not supported uh, by anybody in the sub-region. And now uh, people are trying to create her all kinds of problems so that she becomes unpopular, even though the uh, uh, advisors that are in the parliament now have uh, uh, taken uh, responsibility and have said, no way, not this time, we're going to choose in our full consciousness and, and they've decided that their choice would be this woman uh, as opposed to uh, picking uh, one of the very influential men in our countries. So that is what explains uh, why we need uh, national leadership. Uh, the international community had to 
uh, has to accept to deploy this uh, this force uh, and this international force and uh, with the uh, help of the uh, United Nations uh, we're going to pacify the country we're going to demilitarize all the uh, uh, armed group and we're going to give the freedom to everybody to uh, a chance to contribute but we have to reconstruct the state and we can have election in a country in which nearly all the uh, uh, state is destroyed we must reconstitute our administration we must reconstitute uh, our defense forces and there's no police for so this nothing how can you talk about a, a responsible national leadership and when the condition will be met and when the displaced uh, population uh, inside or outside the country will be able to come back home uh, uh, we will be able to have elections and will uh, elections to, that, that will uh, allow us uh, to, to elect uh, responsible people that will be able to lead responsibly the Central African Republic that is my analysis of the situation and my response to the question that were asked very well we will have a second round of questions now. If you want to, uh, please go ahead, sir. Uh, my name is Ekron Dati. I'm working uh, the uh, political affairs department of the United Nations, but the pastor has already answered my question in part. My question was, uh, what uh, do the Central African Republic and the international community can do for the next election so that the elections, instead of exacerbating the crisis, uh, become the, uh, on the opposite, uh, the uh, source of uh, um, um, stability and peace uh, on a sustainable level uh, in Central African Republic? Uh, yes, sir, you know, you and then the gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador for uh, organizing this event. Uh, uh, thank you to the Archbishop, uh, to the Imam, and to the Reverend for coming uh, he here from Bangui in New York. My name is, I'm from the Mission of Japan. Um, I'm a uh, first secretary responsible for African Affairs. Uh, uh, Central African uh, uh, Republic was my first uh, uh, nomination uh, 15 years ago. I was uh, uh, from 1998 to, to, to 2001 at the time there were uh, peacekeeping operations all at the time but there was no religious crisis as we have now and there was I was uh, completely uh, shocked when I realized uh, that there was a crisis uh, now I have a question you said that the hatred of the Central African Republic people was cultivated by the political uh, uh, by the politicians and uh, that has caused uh, the uh, massacres and uh, in Bangui and, uh, and the crisis in the in the entire country I would like to know if it's possible do you think to to pacify uh, the people of the Central African Republic because uh, in the near future as far as I know, in the Central African Republic, most of the people were our Christians. Uh, Fifteen percent were, were Muslim, but they live together. And therefore, I would like to know what is their point of view in terms of the uh, coexistence of the various religious communities in the future in the country. Very well. I'm Rad Samuel. I'm um, with the United Nations, currently assisting with uh, UN coordination in response to the crisis in uh, CAR. Let me also commend the three gentlemen for the initiative they have taken and the courage um, to uh, take such an initiative to bring communities together and resolve the crisis. And it, this is particularly difficult when society is, is so polarized and is caught up in a, in a cycle of violence when people tend to uh, associate themselves to their own side and, and become part of the, of the problem. So this is really important for, for the country. We um, talk about the many long-term problems of the CAR. Uh, that is very true, and the solutions are going to be found in uh, the long-term structural issues, political, societal uh, divisions that have existed for a long time, external interference, and so on and so forth. But at the moment, we have you have a very serious crisis in, in your hands. 
uh, reconciliation, as we know, is a long-term uh, issue, particularly when things have reached this level of polarization and, and violence. And so my question is, what are the things that need to be done without being too ambitious on achieving complete reconciliation um, in order to curb and ch uh, turn the cycle of, of violence and vengeance that is going on at the moment at the community level? And how does that link with the UN's effort to uh, build a new peacekeeping force and strengthen the current political mission that is on the ground? In other words, how can our efforts and your efforts be linked up to curb the violence and change the dynamics on the ground? If I may just add very briefly, um, community level reconciliation and, and dialogue is one important element, but there's also the national political reconciliation and dialogue uh, that needs to take place. How do the two link up and how uh, should they form a part of one, of one whole? And how could that be supported in the medium to long term? Thank you. Um, merci beaucoup. Alors, une, une autre et après ça, nous retournons nos... Okay, merci beaucoup. Euh, merci, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, de cette invitation. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me introduce myself, Mr. Shodam, of the uh, Mish, uh, I'm an advisor at the Permanent Mission of Senegal here. Thank you again for your invitation. Thank you uh, to these, uh, these excellencies here uh, from uh, the uh, uh, Central African Republic uh, uh, talking uh, to talk about the very difficult situation in that country. It's a difficult situation, but I, I, I remain hopeful, I must say, because the people that I see here sitting at the table who uh, belong to various uh, religious faiths uh, give us hope that tomorrow, yes, there could be, of course, only if the people really want it, a qualitative change in the country. And therefore, hope remains. Uh, for that reason, too, uh, we, uh, and we know all that the, the, there were a lot of atrocities, a lot of people were killed, a lot of people were displaced, thousands of people. So, so uh, for uh, uh, reconciliation strategy to, to, to be possible, we need to forgive. Uh, without forgiving, it's going to be very difficult. And uh, to, in, uh, to, f to that end, uh, do you think that it would be possible in order to bring uh, peace and stability in a country that there they could be forgiveness and that the people could fraternize and move forward? Do you think that it would be possible to create or set up a structure so that the uh, the uh, the uh, 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 Truth and Reconciliation Commission, such as the one that there was in South Africa, could exist? Because without such truth and without uh, reconciliation, it will be very difficult uh, to move forward in the Central African Republic. Uh, Thank you very much for evoking that uh, matter of justice in the Central African Republic. A, a Truth and Reconciliation uh, Committee is a very interesting idea. So with the several questions that were asked, uh, I'll let you decide how to answer them. Indeed, we feel that it's time to put in place a, a truth commission uh, for, for truth, justice, and rec rec reconciliation. What happened in the CAR has affected every level of society, from the villages to the cities, even the, the capital. That means that it's time for every village to have people sit down and face each other and talk about what happened, how did it happen, who was guilty, who did what, who, whose hands are dirty. All that should be held in in, in community talks, uh, and if we've shared the truth, then healing can begin already. By saying to the other, you've hurt me, you've killed, you've destroyed hope, you killed my husband. People s need to say that face to, to face so that they can let go of their hatred because hatred causes revenge and then that just causes a cycle of violence. That logic is a dead end. We need to change things and that requires 
uh, people's suffering to be re recognized, and then there needs to be justice. We've heard that for years and years people have committed crimes, and they com are continuing to commit them. There's no justice. How can order be reestablished? People have been falsely accused, who've lost their, their jobs. How can that be redressed? We, people need to be heard, and justice needs to be reestablished. And the, the attorney said, "We need to reestablish a judicial system. We need uh, the police and uh, judges who uh, are uh, defenders of the law. And nobody can be ab above the law. And what have we got now? We've got the law of the, the, uh, the jungle. Might makes right. People who have uh, grenades uh, in." 4th of March in Bangui, Antti uh, Baraka came to Bangui uh, asking for their leader to be freed. And th that happened at the, the Palace of Justice. Justice needs to be stronger. That's why the mixed uh, investigation c c committee that we're asking for, that the attorney asked for, needs to be taken into account so that people who have suffered are are acknowledged, the, vic the victims are acknowledged. The people uh, are, uh, are, are never pr prosecuted for what they've done if they continue to, to keep their jobs, to drive nice cars, and then the victims continue to live in poverty with no justice. It's impunity that's brought us to this situation. So it's time for us to get rid of impunity. And once we've gotten out of that cycle and we've taken into ac account uh, people's uh, hurt, we can then uh, rise above that. Otherwise, people will, will be mired in their hate. People will say, that man who killed my husband, he's still there. And the country will never be able to be built by people who, who can't even speak to each other. So we need to get beyond that. And that's why a Truth, Justice, and Reconciliation Committee is necessary. But uh, that has certain prerequisites. So uh, uh, people are slowly beginning to understand that this is a kind of a sick game where people sh uh, shout and they yell and they kill. But you can't, thou shalt not kill. You need to get above the, 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 the barbarism. Slowly people are beginning to, to understand that. Uh, ahead of the anti uh, Kim and s said that we, c we can't, uh, hunt down Muslims. That sh sh is, a, uh, is a, a sign of progress. We're aware of that. And young people that might people call criminals, th thieves. We we need to put a, a, an end to to uh, this uh, cycle of, of uh, victimization. And we need justice, and we need uh, su such criminals to be put in prison. There's, there's only one prison uh, operating in the whole country. That's impossible. And people are being let out of that, that, that prison. What, what kind of message are we sending? It's impossible. So. It, there's so much uh, left to be. To, there's so much to be done in our country, and uh, we. That's what we believe in. Yes, yeah, so many crises uh, in our country have been caused by what you might call amnesty, impunity, really. Uh, people feel that they can do anything, and afterwards th they will have amnesty. That's the consequence of Im impunity. 
So we say enough is enough with this crisis. There, we have to correct ourselves and learn lessons. We don't want to be the only country in Africa where the international community always has to come to our aid. We, we need their help right now, but we, we really need the, the population itself to support these initiatives. We need to work uh, uh, actively so that uh, a, a UN operation works, because otherwise having a thousand, thousands of UN peacekeepers w won't uh, really work, because we have to have a, a, an awareness raising in our, in our country. But there has to be justice. And if, if you want uh, justice to be done, then you have, there has to be no more impunity. So on the, the ground, the Central African people is, is not a hateful people. We continue to say that politicians have imposed such a mindset, but through our prayer and concrete actions, the Central African people will be freed from this hate that's been imposed upon it. Currently, there are some Muslim families that are being protected by the Central African uh, people. And I don't uh, like to label people as Christians or any, any other religion. We're Central Africans. For example, the Imam, the, the, the president of the Islam community since uh, the 5th of December 2013, is living together with the Archbishop of Bongi because his life was threatened. He's living th there with his family. His uh, f uh, f family is, is living with me. That's an example. That's a, that's a message that's perhaps silent, but that means something. I brought the, the head of my own district, who's Senegalese who was born in Central, Af Central Africa, since Central African Republic. His father has been in the country for many years. His father uh, died and he inherited uh, the, uh, uh, from his father. And during this crisis, uh, all his entire uh, family had, had to leave. That's not acceptable. He's a, 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 the head of a family. He should s stay at home. He's also the head of the, the, the local d neighborhood district. He should be able to continue to be the, the head of the district. So I, I brought him in my car in full sight of every, everybody in my neighborhood in the fifth district. We went to see the head of uh, the, the Miskar mission to write a letter that he signed himself so that he would get uh, security guards and so that he could bring his family back into his district. Up until now, uh, his, ha his home has not been destroyed because we spoke with the, the young uh, populations. We told the young people that you have that they had to protect the, the, the house of the district leader. So these are things we've been living through. The security question is, is, is vital so that everybody should be able to speak their own mind and to denounce injustice. That way the Central African people will be able to re have reconciliation. Not all of our, the Muslims among us are foreigners, of course. So what can we do in the, the short and the long term in order to, to support this work? The first thing we need to do is to secure our borders. We're being threatened by jihadists. We have porous borders. People come and go as they please. If the borders aren't secure, you can imagine how difficult this w work is to go throughout the country to speak uh, with, uh, with the population and to d d uh, disarm militias when, tour when, when killers are, are arrested. Groups uh, of reconciliation groups 
need to be ha gathered together, and we need the support of the United Nations. We shouldn't be ashamed to say that we can't handle this by ourselves. At, this state, uh, at the point where we are, we need interna international world solidarity. And that solidarity w will allow uh, the CIR to, to get out of this rut. So we uh, are, are, are calling for the, the uh, support of the international community in the United Nations, and that way security will come back to the country. People will, will be living together, and Central African Republic will uh, once again be a proud uh, state among the other states of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, on behalf of everyone here, I would like to express our great pr 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 uh, uh, appreciation for your participation here today, and not just for that, but for your efforts in your countries, in your country. And as uh, our colleague from Senegal uh, expressed hope for the future and for the future of your country, I think you heard that the, the Secretary General and the people here expressed support for uh, strengthening a transform more transformative processes in the Central African Republic. But as you said yourself, it's a challenge for the people who live there to meet as well. So peop people need to be in support of reconciliation and not of w war. That would be a sad basis. So I would like to conclude on the, uh, this thought of hope. And I thank you very much for coming here today to this discussion. And I'd also like to thank the Chargé d'Affaires. Thank you very much.